Hello, welcome to video number two in this least cost ration calculator series. Video two, we're going to cover actually using the, the calculator to make our ration. In the first video, we talked about downloading the file and then downloading the add-in. Uh, here's a link to the first video. If you scan this on your smartphone, it'll bring up the first video. Or if you want to throw caution to the wind and just jump right in with downloading the files without watching the instruction video, here's a link to that. Here's a link to the site that has the Excel file and the, the Open Solver plugin to make it work. All right, so let's begin. Let's start um, with the ration calculator. I've got it open here in Excel. And when you open it for the first time, it'll have a yellow bar across the top that says something about enable the content. Uh, you want to be able to, you want to be sure to do that because that'll allow the Open Solver to run in the background that actually powers the calculator. So the first step. The first thing I want you to notice as you open this file is that uh, the cells are color coded. Uh, green cells are where you're going to enter your information. Gray cells are title cells, just descriptive titles. And red cells are cells that are auto calculated. So never change anything in a red cell. If we go over here, uh, you can see some of these red cells actually have the functions uh, that'll show if you click on them. We left all the functions visible and unprotected uh, to make this program as flexible as possible so the end user can then modify it to better fit what they want to do. But that does have a little bit of risk because it's pretty easy to actually hit delete and delete those functions in the red cells. So I caution you to not change anything in the red cells. Now if you do change something in the red cells, you can always just delete this file and then re-download a fresh copy that'll have the correct functions in there. Uh, all right. So that now that that's out of the way, let's get started using this. The first step you need to do is you need to give your ration a title. Because when you go to print this, that title will print and it'll help keep everything straight. So let's just call this one a sow gestation. Okay. Uh, we've left data in there for you for corn and soybean meal. You'll want to check those feed values, of course, with your analysis to make sure it's still in line with what you want to do. And then you can go across here and enter up to 19 feedstuffs. Uh, and to do that, you just you click in the cell, delete what's there, and type in what you want to do. Uh, let's do uh, DDG. And then you would type in the values for DDG. For anything you don't know, just leave zeros. Uh, so you see, we tried to be as inclusive as we could be and include any nutrient that anyone might find useful all the way down. And then at the bottom in row 35, you'll see where you enter the cost per 100 pounds, your cost per century weight. And then uh, in the red cell below that, it'll calculate the cost per pound. And then I want to take just a second and talk about this row 37 and 38. 37 and 38. These guys kind of act like breaks on the least cost ration calculator. I'll give you an example to make this easier. Um, so let's say you're in the South and you're going to feed um, cotton seed meal in one of your rations. Well, cotton seed meal is great nutritionally and it's great financially because it's super cheap, super cheap, super nutritious, but it's not super palatable to livestock. So the least cost ration calculator, if just left to its own, own measures, would put a lot of cotton seed meal in your ration, and you would end up with a ration that livestock wouldn't care to eat because it's not very palatable. So down here in these cells, you can enter the maximum amount that you'd want in the ration. So if, if you have a feed stuff that's not very palatable, but is very cheap, uh, you'd want to limit that in your ration. But because um, both corn, corn is very palatable, we're not gonna run into problems with having too much. Uh, and soybean meal is very expensive. That, for that reason, we're not gonna run into problems with having too much. We've left this at the, the minimum is zero and the maximum is 2,000. But that's, these two rows here are an important consideration for some specific feed stuff. So keep that in mind. So you enter that, the nutrition information, the cost information, and then your min and your max for each feed stuff in those cells. And then once you get all your ingredients put in, you'll scroll over here and you'll put in what you actually want in your ration. So for most of these, it's best if you put in a range. So um, 
You'll put the minimum you want for each of these nutrients and then the maximum. Now, if you're not gonna balance it for some of these, just um, put in zero for the minimum and then a thousand for the maximum. For this example ration we put in, we only balance for protein. And then at the bottom of this, in this cell X35, cell X35, you'll put your total pounds you want in your ration. Just to keep things simple, we left this at, at a 2,000 pound ration. Okay, so once you get all of your feedstuffs put in, your desired nutrient analysis put in, you'll wanna go up here and click on data. And over to the right, because we installed the open solver add-in, you'll see this blue and red um, graph and you'll click solve. And generally it'll take just a flash or two and then it'll solve for your ration. Oh, let's go ahead and change this. Let's change our minimum protein. Just to give me an example, let's change that down to 17.5. Then we'll go up here, we'll do data solve. Click out, you gotta click out of the cell and then click solve. There we go. And it solved our ration. Uh, and you'll see in column Y, this is basically a feed tag. This is just the feed tag that'd be printed on the on the sack of feed if you were buying at retail. You'll see our final protein. We ended up, we wanted it between 17.5 and 19.5. We ended at 17.5. And then you've got all the other nutrient analysis for the stuff you entered. And then down at the bottom. There you have it, you have your price for 100 pounds and then your price for pound. And then because uh, in a lot of settings, it's helpful to think about things for 50 pounds, there's a price for 50 pounds. And then if you scroll down here at the bottom, we're looking at rows 39 and 40. These are the actual pounds of feed you'll put in each batch and then per ton. Now for us, we have the same, we're figuring a 2000 pound batch or a one ton batch. So those are the same values for us. But if you wanted to mix a larger or smaller batch, you'd go over here and then the green box because we only change green boxes, you'd put in your different, your different value. And there you have it. So you've got your ration calculated. This is the least expensive ration using your ingredients uh, up to your specific uh, nutrition desired, oh, you'll need to print it. And it's already set up to print uh, landscape and fit everything on the same page. So to do that, you'll do file, print. And because we entered a ration name here at the top of the page, it'll print everything you need to know with the ration name and then the mixing instructions down at the bottom. So we have our copy. And that's about all there is to it. We really worked hard to design uh, a program that was functional, but yet still very easy to use. Uh, and, I, and I hope we've done that for you. All right. There you have it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this useful.